Hello and welcome back to the channel. This week we are talking robotic lawn mowers because I've managed to, I think, bag myself a bargain. You can find them all about on eBay, secondhand, things like that. So I'm going to tell you what to look for, what to avoid, that kind of thing. And we'll see whether my, uh, my purchase works out, whether it's any good or not. So we'll take a look. Well, it's a bit of a minefield when you look on Facebook Marketplace and uh, eBay and places like that, Gumtree, for robotic lawnmowers, which seem to be the popular thing at the moment. Robotic lawnmowers and robotic vacuum cleaners. But you do have to be careful what you're looking at because a lot of them are being sold as spares or repair and typically don't have a lot of history or sometimes not working you can't see or uh, check them out you just have to buy them on a bit of trust with the seller so as usual with ebay check out the seller see what else they've sold see if they seem trustworthy uh, now i came across this one on ebay which i think um, was worth a try uh, the main thing that i look for is why it's being sold and what the fault is for why they're selling it and that kind of helps a little bit working out whether you might do okay or not in this case it was the flymo easy life 150 one of the more basic ones to be honest um, but it had some of the functions i liked it had bluetooth so you could connect to it and uh, control it and check how it is um, now this listing, it showed that it's selling a spares or repairs, lights up, connects to Bluetooth, but no charger. Um, don't know if it works or not. Uh, it also has uh, a bit of damage to it. The top cover is cracked, but again, on the photos, they've been quite genuine. They've shown that. And on the photos, it also shows the charging station, which I wasn't sure if I was going to get or not, because it didn't say in the listing. Uh, but it did show the manual and that was quite a good thing because the problem you've got to watch for is some of these are stolen because it's something that's in your back garden it's easily picked up and taken away and then sold on places like eBay, Facebook Marketplace, Gumtree and you don't know if it's stolen or not. If it's stolen chances are you won't be able to pair it with your phone and you won't have the pin code for it so it's probably not going to be possible to be used so you do take a bit of a chance now the fact that the owner's manual was there gave me a bit of hope um, and that they said it talks to bluetooth as well so i was i was reasonably hopeful that this was going to work out the, the seller hasn't sold that many things 10 items but 100 percent positive um, I did contact them and ask about the pin code and things like that and they did respond quickly they actually apologized that they couldn't ship it the moment that i paid it was the next day and things like that and the fact that they were communicating with me like that gave me a really good feeling so why don't i show you what turned up and then you can see whether you think this is going to work or not well this is what turned up in the post I've obviously unwrapped it and already taken a look. Let's just get the box out of the way. I mean, it's actually the original Flymo box. Yes, it's been taped over for uh, packaging and transport, but it's the original box. There's the unit on its base, which is good. It also came with uh, an extension wire for the charger with the proper connectors on it which was really good um, like i showed you in the listing it also came with the operator's manual as well um, and like i say on the messaging the seller also confirmed the pin code for it to allow me to log into it and pair it up bluetooth 
that was all that it came with no charger as listed no boundary wire pegs things like that but i'm not too worried about that because i think i can solve that fairly easily now you can see the damage to it it looks like something's been dropped on it because you can see there's a crack in the casing there and you see there's a big section missing here where you can see the uh, one of the, the it's actually the cutter motor so i'm going to need to fix that what i'm going to do is uh glue a piece a piece of plastic in there and probably just glue that the rest of it seems okay if i take it out of its little base let's have a look at the base first the base looks pretty standard no no damage to the base which is great news the connectors there on the back so you can see power and then we've got our left and right boundary wire and our guide wire i'll explain a bit more about that usefully it does say the power supply voltage so you can see that it says 28 volts and that symbol means dc maximum 36 watts from that i can work out the right power supply for it so that's it uh, that's hopeful looking at the mower itself it's got the usual sort of wear and tear scratches and bumps and things like that obviously last year's grass mowings on it let's just have a little look underneath it and you can see it's pretty much what you'd expect from a used lawnmower now these are the the razor blades that do the actual cutting they're probably going to need replacing then they're looking a little bit worse for wear but otherwise not too bad spin it there it spins freely all the wheels move obviously these are the the powered wheels the rear two the rest of it i think that's uh, that's in pretty good condition powering it on you can see it powers on now what i'm going to do is i'm going to enter the pin and i'll come back to you there we go after entering the pin it's now actually waiting for me to tell it what to do now it won't do anything else because nothing else is powered so it'll just sit there and not really know what else it can do but it's responding it looks like it's happy it's accepted the pin so i'm really pleased with that let's look at getting power to the base this is where having the manual is quite useful if not you can go online you can always download the manual in the back here it has the specifications of the battery the power supply the cable the charge current so we know that the power supply is 28 volts dc and the charge current is one amp so we need a 28 volt dc with one amp now looking at the official flymo chargers you can pay anything 100 150 which is a lot of money for a power supply but what i did was i looked at 28 volts a uh, couple of amps power supply and i've managed to find one it's actually used for reclining chairs and all i'm going to do is replace the connector on it and power this up so that might be a good option if you've lost a power supply or anything like that if it's very expensive the original why not look for alternatives and do it yourself it's fairly straightforward i'll show you what i've uh, what i've ordered here we go i found a basic ac dc you can see output 29 volts which is fine two amps which is ideal for this um, now what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut the connector off and then the wire that came with it with this special connector on it i'm going to cut that join those wires up and uh, hopefully it'll power it now what i did do is take this off oh, and the good news is this now charges so by putting the unit onto the charger connected up it'll happily charge on my special adapted charger so that's good um, now the next thing is we didn't have any boundary wire come with it so i was looking at boundary wire and again that can be quite expensive but depending on what wire you've got you might be able to use something else now in my case i have quite a bit of satellite cable it's this this stuff now obviously what i'm going to do is split it because i only need one and i'm going to use the outer of it and put a connector on 
so that we can plug it into the boundary connections and that should do because that's what I've got spare. The boundary wire is nothing special. Ideally I would say you probably want single core, probably solid rather than braided. But any wire I think will work perfectly fine. So it's worth experimenting with that. Now what I've done is I did actually cut a small test piece off, connected it up and tested to make sure because on this one the base has a little indicator light here that tells you the state of the boundary wire and in my case it came up and it liked this wire so I think that's going to work well as well so the next part is going to be laying out my boundary wire and working out where to put it out in our garden but so far I think this purchase has been well worth it so far, it's seeming like this is going to work nicely. Oh yes, one thing before doing the boundary wire, I'd like to get this casing off, work out how to fix this, but also I want to take a look at the insides and the circuitry. Now looking at it, I think if I take these torques off, the base should come out. It does say that you can replace the battery on these and I'm going to guess that's how you get at it. So I'm going to take the bottom off and let's have a look inside. Let's see what, what it's actually got hiding away inside it. There's the battery, a oh, Husqvarna group. So the battery on this is an 18 volt, two amp hour. Uh, I'll show you a close up of it in case you want it for, for repairs. Now rather than bore you with the next bit, you can see I've uh, put the base down in a corner of the garden and I've ran the boundary wires using the um, satellite cable which actually works great you just put a spade connector on the end and then bury it only an inch or so around the outside of the garden which I've done uh, I also made a little plastic cover that I've glued in place to, uh, to cover that damaged part on the top as you can see uh, I have actually put an yet another cover over it just to make it more watertight and then uh, sent it off for its first run around the garden as you can see and it's tracing around on the edge of the boundary wire quite successfully.
you can see we had a couple of failures with it trying to get back to its docking station and automatically parking itself. Now I think this was because of the position of the docking station and also the spare wire you can see coiled on the left of the screen. So I got rid of that, changed it around a little bit. Um, you can see now I've cleared away a lot of that spare cable and uh, moved the position of it and it, you should see that it docks and parks quite happily now that it's been positioned so that's something important to watch for when you do set yours up to make sure that it's all lined up nicely and that it's happy before you all peg it down and decide that's where it's going to go Well then, there you go. So that's setting up the uh, Flymo robotic lawnmower. Um, I've got a lot more content coming f about the Flymo because I would like to automate it, add it to Home Assistant, things like that. It does have a USB port on the back of it, which I think might be quite useful. Might be able to do something with that. Um, but for now, that's all on this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, please do remember to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.